Hello again and welcome back. In this lecture, I'm going to show you three new environment settings, the cell size, the mask, and the snap raster environment settings that work with raster data. In my experience, they go well together and they are commonly needed for different types of raster analysis. First, you'll notice we're finally using some new data here compared to the last three lectures. We're using the same digital elevation model we were using, but instead of using some feature data with it, we now have a raster in the background here, which is another historical land cover raster from 1966. And the reason I'm using it is because it's at a 250 meter cell size, where our digital elevation model is at a 30 meter cell size. You should probably be able to even see that from your video here where this just looks very smooth and here we can see the edges of this raster here. So if I was to go to zoom to the raster resolution where a pixel in the raster is a pixel in my screen, we get zoomed way out here. But then if I zoom to this raster's resolution, I get zoomed way in where I can't even see the other raster anymore. So very different cell sizes here. Uh, but I'll zoom back out to this layer. Now. Imagine a problem where I want to work with the land cover raster and the digital elevation model raster within raster calculator. And this digital elevation model has already been effectively clipped. It's been extracted to an area of interest that's effectively circular here. And I only really want to analyze data within that area as opposed to all the area out here in this regional land cover raster. So if I zoom back to the layer, I need to figure out a way to get this land cover raster and this digital elevation model to conform. And really, this is the area I'm interested in, so I not only need to get them to conform, but I also need them to um, just be analyzing the area within this digital elevation model. So the question I have is, where is any open space area, this green area that's uh, value eight in the land cover raster, that's within the area of the the digital elevation model here. Well, I can do that with a simple extract by attributes here. And if I go to input raster, I can select the land cover raster and I can say where clause value equals eight. And that will pull out all of the value of eight cells within the raster into a new raster and leave everything else as null. But if I want it to be within this area of the digital elevation model, I need to go to environment settings. And I'm going to set two particular settings right now. First, under raster analysis, I'm going to set the mask to the Leavenworth digital elevation model. Now, a mask is maybe familiar to some of you from uh, other image processing disciplines, but probably not familiar to that many of you. A mask lets you basically say, anywhere that there are pixels in this mask layer, give me back pixels uh, in the analysis layer. Anywhere that there are not pixels uh, or that there are null values, I don't want that data to be processed. Don't give me those back except those null values. And you can provide a raster mask or a polygon mask, which will get converted to raster. And if the polygons aren't completely connected, if you have open space between them, it'll still just give you the pixels that are in um, that overlap with the polygon. At the same time, I'm also going to set the processing extent again to the same as the digital elevation model because otherwise, even with the mask, it's going to fill in the rest of the area with null values um, all the way out to the original extent of the land cover raster. So that takes time, it takes disk space, I just don't want to do it. So I'm going to set the processing extent too. And then just to show you um, another environment setting at the same time, I'm going to set the cell size for the raster analysis. Normally it's smart and it says maximum of inputs. Give me the least precise um, calculation you can and give me, uh, because, or it's most precise actually, but it's um, fewest raster cells. It gives you the coarsest raster that's involved in an analysis uh, as the cell size because that's really the limiting factor on your analysis. You can't really get more precise than that raster even if your other data is at higher resolution. So it usually chooses the largest cell size, the maximum of inputs. But in this case, we want to resample the raster at the same time. So we're going to set same as uh, Leavenworth digital elevation model and then click OK. Now, I want to confirm first that it honors these environment settings. So I'm going to go to tool help. And it does honor cell size. It does honor extent. And it does honor mask. 
So I should be okay to use all of these environment settings in this calculation here. And I'll call this open space in Leavenworth area and hit okay to run it. And it's gonna run as usual. And it gives me those values back as a new raster. And if I leave only it on, I can see that one, it only gave me data back in the outline of that raster. Two, it's at the new cell size. I can see that from here, even though it's chunky still because the land cover raster is chunky, I can see from here that it's at that cell size, which was uh, actually 10 meters, not 30. And um, because it has that really smooth edge. But when I zoom in, I can see that it has the tiny raster chunks here. And instead, um, the, the 250 meter size being kind of a holdover from the original is still pulling out a bunch of cells there, but I can see that those are many cells in there with the pixel inspector. So those environment settings pulled out uh, or came out as the mask and as the um, cell size, but I still might have a bit of a problem. If I wanted to take this into raster calculator, my cells don't align. I get these weird edges here. So with the with the pixel inspector, I can see that I'm partially overlapping a bunch of other cells. And if I wanted to take these into raster calculator for uh, further analysis w along with the digital elevation model, maybe I wanted to subset the open space that is above or below a certain elevation for analysis for a specific habitat or something, or to find a park location that I would like to build. Um, the, since these cells don't align, that makes our analysis much more imprecise. And so what I want to do is I also want to set a snap raster. And you can think of a snap raster kind, kind of viscerally, the way it's talking about, like a snap, as if the corners of these cells ended up snapping up so that they attach to the corner of the other raster cells and completely realign the raster as the output. So let's run that tool again. I'll go to results and we'll, we'll run it as it was. And I'll rename it since it already has the output, and I'll just add snap to the end. And then under environments, our processing extent's already set because we did that before. And under raster analysis, we have our cell size and mask. But also under processing extent, we have that snap raster. And we can specify any raster to align the corners of our cells to. So I'll click here on Leavenworth Digital Elevation Model UTM. And I don't have to use the snap raster on. Um, on something where I'm going to actually align the cell sizes, but it's generally good to. If I if I did a snap raster where I didn't align the cell sizes as well, it would in fact uh, align the bottom left corner of the raster to the same corner of the um, input raster, and then using its cell size, it would build out from there. So you can get some alignment if you if you want that, but the best way to do it is to make the cell size the same and a snap raster, and that way you get completely overlapping cells. And because we're changing the cell size and the, the actual location of the cells with the snap raster, we are going to get resampling here. So that's important to know. And let's run this one more time. I'll click OK and OK to run. Let's zoom back out. And we get another one here. And let's zoom in and take a look again. Okay, so we still have a problem. I didn't get it right yet, did I? The snap raster wasn't the only thing I needed. And in fact, even though this layer overlays the other part, it's possible that it was snapping correctly, but it's not aligning correctly with the cells still due to another factor. And this genuinely took me a moment to figure out. See if you can figure out what might be going on. Okay, so the thing that I know about that you don't is that this data set and this data set are in different coordinate systems. And what that means is that even if the bottom left corner snaps, it doesn't necessarily mean that the cells overlap or align from there or that they overlap at that point. The bottom left corners are in the same spot, but since they're not in the same coordinate systems, the cells kind of diverge in direction. So I'm going to run this again. And I can set my environment settings. So I have my processing extent as specified below. I have my snap raster set to the digital elevation model. 
and then I'm going to set my output coordinate system to the digital elevation model. Remove these extras that accumulated while I was trying alternatives. And then I'm just going to make sure that my raster analysis is still set. Okay, now with the snap raster and the output coordinate system set so that the uh, set to the same as the layer that I ultimately want it to align with, as well as the processing, processing extent, not necessary, but again, speeds it up and then my cell size set and my mask, I should get what I wanted here. And I'll call it snapped and UTM. Click OK to run it. And there we go. It overlaps with the digit elevation model cells the way it should. And if I want to, I can, uh, let's just do a swipe actually. I was gonna make it semi-transparent, but we'll do a quick swipe with this and take that layer and use the swipe tool and we can see that the cells align perfectly at the edges there so that's it for this lecture in this lecture i think we all learned something and uh, we covered the cell size environment setting where it will downscale or upscale the cell size of a raster for you it while it's doing another analysis we looked at the analysis mask which it basically extracts data and only analyzes an area based upon a mask data set that you provide. And we looked at the snap raster environment setting, which aligns cells in a raster based on the bottom left corner. But it doesn't perfectly align it, as we all learned, uh, unless you set that output coordinate system to be the same as the, the snap raster that you've selected. That's it for our lesson on environment settings. There's plenty more about different environment options that you can look at, but that's all we're going to cover in this course. So I encourage you to take a look at some of the others if you think they'll be relevant to your work. And now you should have a good general understanding of environment settings to take with you as you go look at those other options. See you next time.